Tonight, we're asking you to help us find two of Britain's most wanted men and help identify the man who staged their extraordinary escape from prison. Anything I've ever done on my own, no one has ever known about. I've never been arrested, never been caught for any of it. And that's the way it should be. Well, my roots, what ended me up being involved in crime is, is quite an unusual one. I grew up in Camden Town and I won a scholarship to go to a private boarding school when I was um, 10. I knew some people out of Camden Town and Kentish Town and when they started telling me about the stories of this, that, the other, I thought, okay. And I've never been one of those ones just to you know, mess around doing this ever. So I went straight in at the deep end, which was robbing banks and security vans. From the moment you pull that balaclava on, you have separated yourself in a way that you can't put it back in the box. You can't, it's like when you get toothpaste out of the, out of the tube. Now I've jumped out of planes all around the world, you know, and nothing equates to, uh, uh, to robbing banks or security vans, you know and you know you're doing something that's wrong and you're fighting against everything, you're fighting against your conscience, you're fighting against every time you do it. Well, we progressed and progressed uh, and I lasted 18 months, but then it went really, really wrong. And I got 18 years in prison when I was 22, 23. Over a period of time, you can almost tell an, uh, a prison officer when he's come along because of the way his keys jangle or the way his feet go, you know what I mean? When you have so much time, you're sitting there, you're going, how the freaking hell can I get out of here? You go through all the possibilities in your mind. So I went through maybe 20 ideas down to the one that I knew was definitely, definitely feasible and achievable. And that was getting a helicopter to come and land on the uh, exercise yard. The, most, the, the key ingredient was the person who was going to eventually hijack the helicopter. But what happened was, the ruse was that he, was, he went to hire a helicopter from any hel helicopter company, the, believe it or not, they're all around the country, and because he was going to look at some, some land because he was going to build some property on it. And that happened to be not too far away from Market Harbour, which is where Gartree Maximum Security Prison is. What he didn't realise was that as soon as he took off, the guy that had hired the helicopter pulled out a gun, pointed at him and said, right, you are now going to take me to uh, Gartree Prison. It, that was on a Thursday, the actual day was, I'll never forget it. And, uh, and it was a very foggy day. So I didn't think it would be a gar anyway that day, but then I could hear this thump, 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 thump. The RAF used to use that prison and Long Larton as training uh, spots and they'd come screaming over you so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary to see a lot of traffic up in the air you know. That was the key ingredient that the helicopter pilot didn't panic, he valued his life. You, you couldn't communicate with each other, there wasn't, there wasn't these mobile phone things what they have nowadays. The day was set, the time was set but the weather was really really bad. He could have hijacked the helicopter, but in the prison, they could have said, right, it's inclement weather, which they do so easily, even if it's just spitting with rain, it's inclement weather, no exercise. He would have come there, and there would no one have been out on the exercise yard. It was just so many possibilities that could have gone wrong. As I say, it landed in Market Harbour, which is the village, just by the prison, and, that, and that's where it was until the police and everyone come. But by that time, they made a good their escape. He was forced to land near the Welland Valley Industrial Estate in Market Harbour and was left handcuffed in the helicopter. In the next five hours, the three men hijacked a series of vehicles. The first was his Ford Transit. Outside Market Harbour, on the A427 Corby Road, they force his Fiat Uno to stop. Once in Corby, Draper seems to have split from the others at about 5.30. He hasn't been seen since. Sometimes when you do these things, you know, you're not doing it to take the credit or whatever. Some of the things I've done, no one ever knows about. 
anything I've ever done on my own, no one has ever known about. I've never been arrested, never been caught for any of it. And that's the way it should be.